something that some of you may have never heard before. If this is your first time at this church, I want to let you know that you could not have found a better church in the area, and I hope you'll come back next week because Justin is a phenomenal communicator. If you've been visiting on a regular basis, you need to come back here and, and just experience what this church is all about because it really is about the God and others. That's what this church is about. So if you're not used to going to church or if you haven't been to church in a while, what I'm getting ready to say, you may not have known. And when I say it, I guarantee you, some of you will not believe it. And some of that is because of the actions of some of my brothers and sisters who yeah. call themselves Christians. Right. So right. But there are some of you in here, you have been in church since God was a boy. And that's how long <laughs> you've been in church, right? <laughs> you've been in church. You know the Bible. You may even know the Bible better than I do. And what I'm getting ready to say is not something that is theologically brilliant in that you're going to walk out of here and say, well, I never thought about that before. But I think that if we really own this statement, I think that this statement has a chance to change lives, starting with yours. And here it is. Very, very simple. God loves messy people. God loves messy people. God loves people that don't have their lives together. God loves people that are hooked on drugs. God loves people that think that they don't need him in their life. God loves people where their life is just going great and they don't see any need for church or anything else. God loves you when you're at your lowest point and he loves you when you're at your highest point. God loves messy people. People. And, and here's what you got to know. That describes you as well. Now Amen. listen to me on this, those of you who follow Jesus. What are the first two letters in the word messy? M-E, right? Part of us mm. understanding Christ and becoming a Christian and following Jesus is by owning our own mess and saying, I am a mess. And the only reason why I'm different now is because of the work of my Lord Jesus Christ. And so, to, to kind of illustrate what I'm talking about, I want you to do me a favor. Go ahead and turn to John chapter 8, the Gospel of John chapter 8. We're going to look real quick at a story there. And as you turn there, let me tell you, if you're not familiar with John, it's the fourth book of the New Testament. We're going to have the words on the screen for you in just a second, if you're not uh, used to uh, opening up the Bible. But it's, it's the fourth book of the New Testament. It's the last gospel. A lot of Christians... It's their favorite gospel because it's almost devotional in style. But it's written by a guy named John. And John was an original disciple of Jesus. He was one of these guys that followed Jesus around wherever he went. So everything that you read in the book of John, John wrote down because he either saw it or he heard Jesus say it. So it's something that you can trust. And, and we get kind of a front row eyewitness look at, at what Jesus is all about. Now, another thing when you read the Gospels, especially John, is that just really bizarre things happen to Jesus all the time.